Welcome to Sculpture Studios, another fantastic project here with our client Robin Morgan and a piece of theatre for Opera North. We've previously worked with Robin on the Gloss Black Horse and the Giant Egg for a performance of Handel's Amadigi back in the summer of 2021. Here, barely six months later, we've been approached with a project for a performance of Rigoletto, namely a mountable zebra and an ornate movable table. As with many theatre performances, props and scenery are often custom made with very specific requirements. These requirements require a lot of thought, design and preparation. A zebra on a table is easy to conceive or put on a piece of paper, but actually creating something, bringing it off the page and ticking all of the client's boxes is something else entirely. Before we even get the go-ahead for the build of a new project, naturally we have to provide a quote for the work. It's often tricky to try and preempt what the project will require, determine exactly how much work, material and manpower is needed, and simply whether it's the sort of work we want to take on and can actually do in the time frame. Fortunately, our online presence and portfolio nowadays means that we get approached with both enjoyable and challenging projects, and this was certainly a bit of both. We really hope you guys enjoy joining us for this one. Are we on? Yep. Yeah. Right, here I am today. I'm going to make a nice zebra or zebra, whichever you prefer. And it's going to be two meters long, no, two meters ten long. And, uh, and that's almost the correct height. And we've got some reference there of that and front on. And I'll start my hot wire. Is it still on? Did you turn it down? No, it should be on. Starting with the cubist form, a lot of you probably know the drill by now, the peripheral has been cut using a hot wire. Aidan's now going to town to remove the initial larger pieces of material before moving down to other handheld tools. It's always important to work to a reference so that you have a goal in mind and your brain doesn't simply wander and do its own thing. Two dimensional images are great to begin with in order to achieve that initial cutout, but 3D models are always more helpful as you can keep it in your hand and actively see what you're working towards. As a little treat, I'm going to stop waffling on for a few minutes and let you guys kick back and relax with Aiden and the carving. Okay guys, it's five past seven in the evening. Everyone's gone home. I'm using a nail brush and then I'll work down with wire brushes. After that, sandpapers uh, and define the details around the eyes and the mouth with um, a riffler. So, let's get to work. telling you I miss nothing because I put the videos together and if you guys don't want to miss anything in the future perhaps become one of our subscribers and I think this is a good moment to mention our patreon page 
If you enjoy what you see here at Sculpture Studios and you want to show your support, why not become one of our patrons and help contribute to our future videos? It really means a lot that people have signed up already from numerous places around the globe, so why not join, become part of the team and let us know where you're supporting us from. We usually see some familiar names in the comment sections below our videos, but don't be shy if you're new and you feel like dropping your thoughts on anything we create. Here we're starting on the metalwork underside of the table. We're using box sections of mild steel, which is going to be strategically clad to make it look as though the entire table is solely made from wood. The reason for the metalwork is that this table needs to be strong, wheelable on and off stage, but we're not simply adding casters. This is going to lift up onto its wheels, be moved onto stage and then dropped to the floor in position. The reason this needs to sit tight is it's going to have people standing on it and it's also going to be on a raked stage so we don't want this rolling down onto the audience front row. Upon putting this initial frame together and simply lifting it off of the trestles, we're conscious of the weight factor. Bearing in mind that at the moment this is only the top frame that's made, by which there's going to be a bottom frame around the legs, metal work for the legs themselves, wooden top boards, wooden cladding, the caster wheels and the air lifting system, not to mention a zebra sitting on top, this is going to get very heavy. We're nipping this in the bud now and moving to a box frame that's literally half the wall thickness, from 6mm down to 3, immediately cutting the weight of the entire metal work by half. A shame because of the material that's already cut and welded, but it's definitely in the best interest of the project. Reaching a stage in the process now where we've got the base of all the elements made and we're inviting the clients down to the studio. Robin has travelled down to us with the director of Rigoletto, Femi Ilufuwuju, and set and costume designer Ray Smith. Now's the time for any changes to be made if necessary during the polystyrene stages for both the zebra and the master pattern of the legs. This saves on any more awkwardly timed changes being made later in the process when we've already started working with moulds and glass fibre. We're told that the actress playing Gilda needs to mount the zebra and lay down on it, so this needs to be accessible and comfortable on stage. The zebra's mane and tail the clients would like made from some sort of soft faux hair rather than anything solid, so this is something we'll have to source for the project. Sometimes a visit isn't about the changes or even the physical project itself, but more about being able to get a good feel for who's on the other end of the production. In the old days where the internet was barely conceived, word of mouth, recommendations and a good working relationship were the key to future projects, and we still retain that same mentality now. Robin has come back to us for multiple projects, and who knows, perhaps there will be something later down the line that Femi or Ray are involved with, where we might be remembered for a smooth and productive process, time will tell. The only other design that needed discussing was that of the leg detail. At the moment only the main form of the leg has been carved, by which we're just clarifying the detailing that's going to be carved into the polystyrene. This is going to be moulded and replicated six times in hollow glass fibre casts to house the structural leg metalwork inside. Aidan's using a stonemason's riffler to carve the leaf detail and will later go over with a soft water-based plaster filler to smoothen the surface before moulding. project would be complete here at the studio without a little secretly sourced sticky back tin foil. Have we told people the secret? Well you better give us an email and find out. Now that the master carving of the zebra has been approved, we're giving this a protective barrier of foil before going on with resin and glass fibre. Just a blanket coat and working up the finish, much like the black horse for Amadigi, as this is going to be a one-off.
adding the final touches to the master carving of the leg, this is now ready to be moulded. We're using a silicon rubber for the initial layers of the mould, capturing all of the detail in the carve, and this will then be backed up with a glass fibre jacket. The silicon is built up in multiple layers, getting thicker and thicker, until we end up with a rubber insert that can be peeled out of the jacket of the mould and then peeled off of the cast for an easy extraction. For the zebra, I'm going to try and keep these glass fibre layers as neat as I can to make working up the surface as easy as possible later on. The side of the zebra that we're looking at here will be the upstage side that the audience can't see, and we've carved little grip points at the top of the shoulder for the actor to use to climb on top. Naturally, the glass fibre needs to be kept really neat in here also, so there are no uncomfortable sharp points that can cause injury. We're going to be installing some metalwork into the bottom of the legs so that this can be secured down to the table, but the metalwork is only going to go up so far. The top half of the legs especially need to be built up with enough glass fibre to be strong enough to take the weight of the zebra body as well as the actor sitting and laying down on top. Multiple layers of glass fibre also ensure a longevity and durability as this will be used for numerous performances. Now that the fibreglass is cured, we're going over with a flow coat of resin which helps to lose that initial texture of the glass fibre mat. We'll then sand the entire surface down, go on with more resin layers and repeat the process using car body fillers. Though this is going to be seen from the audience from, I'd say, 10 or 15 feet away at the very minimum, we're still making sure this is a high quality finish from up close. Whether this is simply for the client's benefit or for all of you guys at home, we want to end with a really decent final result. With the table construction underway, we're creating the metal brackets for the zebra, each individually shaped to fit the different legs. The bolt fixings that will eventually protrude from the bottom of each hoof will be accessible from the underside of the table so the zebra can be added and removed during the performance. The metalwork frame has been created so the bolt fixings go straight through the frame itself rather than only through the top surface of the wood. Each of the fibreglass casts from the leg mould need to be trimmed to remove all of the excess material and paired up in order to be joined. We're seaming these from the inside using glass fibre to preserve the detail on the outside as much as possible. It's then a case of cleaning up all of the join lines on the exterior until we're left with a seamless finish. When this leg was initially carved, it was deliberately scaled to snugly accommodate the metal work bar that would eventually be inside. This means there's not a lot of movement anyway, and we're simply securing the fibreglass shell to the metalwork leg with a polyurethane expanding foam, and this fills the entire space inside. To install the casters, we're creating custom-made open steel boxes. These will allow enough room for the swivel of the wheels, allow the air system tubing to be installed and run from leg to leg, and will be strong enough to support the entire weight of the table, the zebra, and any actors on top when this is all dropped to the floor. The red oxide paint here is doubling up as both a rust protection for the mild steel as well as a base layer of colour for the artwork. We still need to install extra cladding to the frames to make it look as though the entire table is made of wood and there's still a lot more work to go on than first meets the eye. 
Aside from the zebra, as the other half of the project, between cutting the metal, cutting the wood, pre-drilling all the holes to attach everything together, having plates laser cut for the boxes on the floor, welding everything together, prepping wooden panels and screwing these on, we actually do have other work on in the studio as well. Remember when I said that there were a lot of specific requirements? Well, these are all the things that we need to preempt and plan for when providing the initial quote, and determining if we actually have enough time to complete everything in keeping with the client's deadline. This is exactly the kind of project that we might show a future client to demonstrate exactly how much time, planning, processes and material go into the overall budget that Aiden has worked out. Regardless though, when all is said and done, we really hope you guys think it's worth it. We like to think so. tests of uh, the table. We've tried the hydraulics, not the hydraulics, the airdraulics, whatever that's called. Pneumatics. Pneumatics off the floor and everything seems to work. We've fitted everything up, a tank at this end, a tank at that end, got rid of all the bolt holes and uh, we've installed the little switch under here at the back. So this is it. It has to lift a quarter of an inch. And that's it. Try moving it. Clear the wires. Drop. Yeah. On the floor. Can you try and move it? That's down there. That's down. Switch it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Wow. The wheel moves three quarters of an inch, so our metal plate that hits the floor is just in between that. Okay, we can lower it. Lower it. And this is the refill to juice it back up at the end of the night. Or the beginning of the night. And that's it. That's how the artwork looks on top after Aiden's been painting today. Mm -hmm. Still got to varnish it and all that. I've got to get rid of this bit as well. There's the little table. Kind of copied. But I think they're going to have it a lot darker now. And when they get to site, I think they're going to almost black it out. I'm not sure. But for the moment, it's nice and light. what we're going to do here Ruth? Uh, we're going to feather it out from about here downwards so another picture please. don't know if you can see it on this it's really fluffy from about here 
um, and it goes long and into a point like so at that point. Okay. So, yeah, I'm right. going yeah. to start trimming, start hairdressing. I can't do this, never done this before. <laughs> Every day's a school day. Yeah. Yeah, we might kick you. <laughs> Here we are. of what a water-based varnish now so hopefully it builds up some resistance to any scratching uh, but it is only water-based it's meant to go on a decorative item really see how we get on With everything being made in good time, it means the cast can rehearse with the props, familiarise themselves with all that we've made, and fingers crossed, no problems at all. Everything feels nice and solid here at the studio, what with us doing a few rehearsals of our own, so this is now ready to head out. We'd like to thank our client Robin Morgan for coming back to us with a second project, and to Femi, Ray, and the rest of the team at Opera North. We wish the best of luck to the cast and crew of Rigoletto, and it's amazing to see the promotional shots of how everything looks all set up on stage after seeing the initial concepts just a few months before. We look forward to any projects with you guys in the future. Theatre work always has its unique challenges, with innovative ideas that look to push the boat out and to do something a little out of the ordinary. Hopefully these behind the scenes peaks show you just a glimpse of some of the creative processes that make up some of the truly spectacular theatre productions of today. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below, and for all of our true die-hard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our support contributions go toward the creation of these videos, so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>